muster up the confidence, whatever it takes. If you're listening to this, whatever you do, just post a video on your Facebook or your LinkedIn for the next seven days straight and then evaluate, turn around and say, was that so bad? You found your way to the Winning Tactics podcast with host Adam Sinkis. Adam discusses winning tactics with small business owners and entrepreneurs, uncovering processes and introducing the tools and solutions for enhancing the bottom line. Thanks again for finding your way to the Winning Tactics podcast and now your host, Adam Sinkis. What is going on, everybody? We are finally back from our hiatus this summer of taking a little bit of time for ourselves to uh, just realign and refocus, uh, which is always important to do in your business. Um, But super, super excited to be back because, gosh darn it, I got through about the middle of last month and realized I miss being on camera and sharing all these great insights with everybody. So um, here we are. We are back. Uh, Don't forget to take a moment and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitch. We're on Twitch now as well. Um, And uh, also give us a like, uh, you know, on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review there as well. So um, we appreciate that. Um, I'm excited today. We are talking kind of down one of my favorite paths um, because there's a lot of misinformation out there about it. Uh, and it is the, uh, it's all about turning eyeballs into dollars, right? You know, we're, we're, we're in a space where so many people spend so much time online looking at your company, um, and looking right. And, and so, um, it's, how do we get them from looking to buying and spending money? Cause that's ultimately all of our goals, uh, as business owners, um, and, I bring an expert with me today, Eamon, uh, Eamon McKinley, fueled, awesome dude. Uh, he has really, in my opinion, he has crafted uh, a strategy, a bunch of strategies that, that work immensely well in this space. And um, if you don't, if you haven't seen him on Facebook or LinkedIn, uh, awesome dude to follow, post all kinds of amazing stuff. Eamon, welcome to the show. So glad to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hey, thanks, Adam. Um, excited to be on. Um, who I am, I'm a small town kid from a uh, little town called Snowflake, Arizona. Um, and I uh, grew up kind of a, kind of a country family. Um, football was my life. Went and served a mission for my church after uh, high school. Came home and thought I wanted to be a football coach, and uh, realized that football coaches don't make very much money <laughs> unless you make it to the big leagues. Um, and I thought, man, I couldn't, I couldn't support a family on thirty thousand a year. You know, uh, it's just the the main thought that was in my head. Like, I want to have a family. I want to have kids, and I want to be able to do fun stuff with them. I can't live on thirty thousand a year doing that, um, and, and being able to do the things we want to do. So, um, got into door to door sales, went back and forth between door to door and, uh, did a ton of different things. I mean, in the past seven years, I've done, I've held a lot of different jobs and not because, uh, a lot of people think I'm wishy-washy when uh, they hear that, but really the truth, the truth is, is, because of social media, you talk about turning eyeballs into dollars. Every, I mean, I just get hit up all the time with new opportunities and Fueled was one of them. Um, so I can talk a little bit more about that later on, but um, that's kind of my story. Just the opportunity has come pretty much at every stage through social media. Yeah. You know, I- I love it. I absolutely love social media and I hate it all at the same time. Right. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's the, uh, the gift and the curse, uh, because there's, there's so many great things that you can do on social media and you can get out to such a broad audience. And in reality, most of that you can do for free, um, which is what I love about it, but it is, it can be a huge time suck too. 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. balancing that out with all the other things that you have to do in, in business and, and making sure that you don't go down this rabbit hole of six hours later, you're like, man, I just finished up like, you know, hitting all the social networks and didn't do anything else today. So, yeah, yeah, but, it can be a time suck for sure. You know, that, that might just be me. I'm, I, you know, I, I like to go down that rabbit hole and then I get stuck there. So I think a lot of people do though. <laughs> oh yeah. Everyone does. It's 2021. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I think is really interesting though, I'm in a lot of small business groups on Facebook because we, we support a lot of small businesses. And one of the things I see so, so often on there are these like and follow trains. Have you ever seen those before? You mean, are you talking about like little groups where like little pods where someone shares their post, everyone goes and likes and comments on it. Is that well, what you're talking e about or no? Not even that. Like the ones where they're like, hey, uh, you know, drop your business information below and and follow oh. follow three other people, right? You know, yeah. I'm sure you've seen those. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I always chuckle at those because I'm like, well, this is a great concept it's totally the wrong audience for like 90% of these businesses in that space. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, probably. <laughs> who knows? I, I would like to hear anyone who's had a positive result out of that. Um, yeah, I get to, the, the biggest one I've seen out of that is, uh, is I had one girl like, yeah, I got like four sales the last time I did it. I'm like, okay, cool. Like how much were those sales? Like I started going down the path because I was just curious. She's like, mm -hmm. oh, they were like $3 sales. <laughs> hey, 12 bucks on one post that took you no money. Hey, that's a positive ROI. Can't <laughs> hate on that, right? Can't hate on that. But I, I think it's, you know, I think it's the exception, right? And, and one yeah. of the things I know you focus on is about building the right audience. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on, or, you know, how do you approach building the right audience? Man, that's, um, that's a really good question, especially we're in the thick of it with fuel because we've got a new business and a new business model. It's like, we're trying to take the, the, the world by storm with a brand new business model, brand new concept. And, and we are trying to target the higher end, higher level entrepreneurs of the world and not just the, the, not just the people who have a lot of money, but people who have high morals and high standards and, and actually want to leave an impact on the world. So getting to those people has been my main job, my main priority since I joined Fuel. And a few things um, that I think I've learned in the past in terms of, um, you know, what, what we're using to apply here at Fuel to get in front of those people. Um, Facebook groups is a big one. Like how it, the question is, how do we get in front of the right people? Right. Yeah. Like what's, what are the best platforms? So Facebook groups is a huge one. Um, and honestly, I mean, survey people, ask people in your market, um, where they spend their time. Hey, are you on LinkedIn or Facebook more often? Where, where what, what social media apps do you have on your phone? Like, for us, it's it's funny because you would think that LinkedIn is, is the main driver of fuel. It's not. Yeah. It's actually Facebook and Facebook groups. So I spend a ton of time on Facebook, not saying LinkedIn isn't a great platform for it. It is. But the people on LinkedIn are, are um, kind of stale. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like LinkedIn is kind of a stale platform. I'm not a stale person. Facebook, I can kind of be funny and creative and post whatever the heck I want and nobody shuns me for it. So I think those types of people are, are actually, we're finding them on, on Facebook right now. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, right? You, you mentioned, um, you know, the different, different platforms and, and kind of the different mindset you can put behind it. I, I don't know that I necessarily call it stale, right? But it is, it is a, a little bit more serious than Facebook uh, yeah. LinkedIn is. Um, but it yields a it yields a different type of audience as well, mm -hmm. right? You know, um, and that's really really important. I you know I, I talk to my clients about this all the time. Like they're like, you know, where where do we need to be? I'm like, well, you need to have an account everywhere, but where do you need to spend time? That's where your customers are at. So let's talk about who your customers are. 
um, because they're yeah. very, very different groups. You know, we, we work with roofers and construction companies and they are all over Facebook. Uh, they yeah. are few and far between on LinkedIn. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think that's an important, important piece to, um, you know, to, to distinguish there. Yeah. I think about- a lot of, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I think a lot of people are worried about the wrong things. Like, you know, I've been shooting a few TikTok videos here and there. I'm not really putting a whole lot of time into it. I'm not editing them or anything, but, but Hey, I mean, TikTok's blown up. So yeah. I might as, I mean, if it takes me two minutes a day to shoot a quick video and share my thoughts, I mean, maybe it blows up, maybe it doesn't. I don't see it as a waste of time because I'm practicing putting myself out there. Right. Yeah. So you do want to like, you do want to test because mm-hmm. I know a roofer. We had him on in Field Nation doing a Facebook live training. This dude signed. I don't. I don't think I'm allowed to say the number in millions that he's going to do um, based off of one TikTok video that a commercial property, a, a serial commercial property owner's daughter saw on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> the world's greatest roofer. She, she said, "Dad, you need to talk to this guy." Dude called up TJ McCormack. And he landed, I think, 2,500 residential apartment buildings across the country. That's insane. On contract. So, <laughs> I mean, you, you never know what platform is going to hit. However, it is, you do have to know who your ideal client is mm-hmm. and you have to spend most of your time there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, I am just starting to venture in with the podcast space into, uh, into TikTok a little bit more. Um, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I don't have a whole lot of content there yet. So I I don't have a whole lot of testing to say it's working or not working. Um, But that being said, you know, it's it's an interesting medium. There's a guy on there that I follow well in septic life um, that talks about septic pumping and well drilling like in his company. And Mm. um, it's immensely uh, entertaining. It's educational. Um, super, super smart dude. Just not afraid to say what he thinks. And, um, as a result, he, I, I actually, uh, sent him an email and we've chatted a couple of times and he's like, yeah, I've like tripled my business because of TikTok. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You know, he's also got like 1.2 million followers and you know, he, he's yeah. kind of gone viral on TikTok, but that's um, sweet. But it's interesting, right? Because he took a gamble and just said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to create the content and, um, you know, and found a way to make it work for him. So. See, you never know. Mm -hmm. But you got to put the content out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think, what a lot of people are scared to do. It's like, what do I say? They, you're, you ever seen Talladega Nights where he's like, I'm not quite sure what to do with my hands right now. Like, I feel like that's how so many people, sales, marketing, entrepreneurs, whatever, they just feel completely insecure about putting themselves out there on social media. And and I don't know if it's a millennial thing because, dude, when I was growing up in sixth or seventh grade, if if you took a selfie picture of yourself, like you got made fun of. Like mm-hmm. it just was not cool <laughs> growing up to have selfie pictures of yourself or take a picture of yourself in the mirror, like flexing or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, everyone did it, but nobody talked about it. Right. (laughs) Um, so I think that today, um, it's so normal and natural, but the insecurity and the fear is still there of like, people are going to judge me or it's not going to get me sales or it's not, it's not going to work. And, and, um, you kind of just have to overcome that because the, the truth is like, factually speaking, just looking at the data, look at how many millions of people have been successful online by building, mm-hmm. by putting content out there. The dumbest content you could think of. Mr. Beast. Like <laughs> Mr. Beast, dude. Like there's so many people that have made millions of dollars doing the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. So for you to say that, people aren't going to be interested in you or for you to say that it's not going to work for you. I mean, it, it, it it's not going to work for most people because they're not trying to be better at it. They just try a couple of times and they think it didn't work. So yeah. I think the first thing is just overcoming that insecurity of, 
of putting yourself out there. I would say that is absolutely foundational. And, and I'll tell you one last thing before we kind of get into the tactical stuff. Um, I kind of had almost like a, like, like a hiatus off of social media about a month ago. Like I just wasn't posting a whole lot. And then, um, we, we all love old Gary V and I hadn't listened to him in a long time or, or, or heard anything from him in a long time. And so I was like, you know, what? I need me some Gary V in my life. And it just so happens that the podcast episode that I clicked on, um, one of the things he said was, you are thinking you, you need to, to document, not create, right? He says that all the time, but he goes, the reason that you don't know what to post on social media is because you're thinking like a business owner, not a creator. So if you were just to say, like, I, I can't tell you how many times I've just made a little selfie video after my workout and be like, hey, I just finished up my workout at Fueled. Here's what I was thinking during my workout. Like, mm -hmm. or I just finished this book. Like, just putting your face out there, I guarantee you, just putting your face out there, doesn't matter what you say. 90% of the time, nobody's even going to listen to what you say. Like, yeah. my Facebook Lives, they probably get 30 to 60 seconds of people watching it. And then they're like, okay, next cat video, right? <laughs> so just the fact that people are seeing your face is, is, is huge. Yeah. Staying top of mind, being consistent with your content, no matter what it is, it's so important. You can't just take, take a break. Yeah. You know, I love, I, I love that, like, that you mentioned that right mm -hmm. about the the amount of views right and where people drop off because i think that's i think people you know people are looking for their content to always be the the next viral thing right and it doesn't have to be like that because it, in my mind it only takes one person to see it one time and it be the right time and the right person to turn into something you know crazy like you're talking about the guy on tiktok and you know and that huge deal, like that took one person at the right time at the right place to see yep. that video and turn into millions of dollars of revenue. So, um, you know, so being consistent, I think, is, is a huge, huge piece of that. So, sure. So let, let's shift a little bit more into the tactical things. Right. So so content strategies, I think, are important. Right. Because, you, yes, you can. Posting is important, right? And, and getting out there is important, but you do have to have a little bit of tactical thought to yeah. what you're putting out there. So how do you approach some of that content strategy stuff? You know, man, for me, like my personal um, stuff that I post, I'm just going to be completely honest. I post whatever the heck comes to my mind. And the strategy is, is that I, it's usually within a few, a handful of topics, sales, yeah. marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, leadership, personal development. I posted a lot about my faith, love it or hate it. It's just who I am. Um, and then, I mean, that's really it. Like, and, and a lot of times I've just post funny videos of, of, uh, me and my son, my, my three-year-old, he's crazy. So those get more engagement than anything I post. So <laughs> um, strategically, I would say, you know, like, let, let's go a little bit deeper. Like if you're, if you're a roofer, I'll just tell you what I was posting when I was selling roofs. Cause I sold roofs. Yep. I, I was in your demographic at one point. Um, I took pictures of myself on roofs all the time <laughs> and posted them. This one time I posted a picture of me. I was like, not planning on working that day. I was taking the day off and someone hit me up and they were like, Hey, I just got a this lady has a claim. It was like a slam dunk. Like all I had to do was go sign a contract. I'm not going to turn that down. So I had my white vans on and my, my gym shorts. I went and got on that lady's roof, took a picture of me in my vans and my gym shorts. And that, that as dumb as it is, that triggered a, uh, a conversation with Hunter, the guy who founded yep. fueled. So I was staying top of mind with Hunter. Who knows? If I didn't post that dumb picture, Hunter may have never even reached out to me about coming and joining Field. The other thing that that got me was um, one of the people that I was connected with, that I was friends with, their mom lived in Phoenix. They li this guy lives in Colorado. His mom lives in Phoenix. And he asked me, because he saw that post, he reached out to me and asked me to go look at his mom's roof. I sold his mom a roof. <laughs> so, I mean... 
dude, opportunity is everywhere. A dumb freaking post about me and my vans on a roof led to two great things. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting paradigm, right? Because people are so afraid from a business perspective to post about their personal life. And this is, you know, where, where you, you mentioned like LinkedIn, right? You know, people are so afraid to give a piece of themselves in LinkedIn because, um, well, I'll be, I'll be honest with it. There's a lot of times that people get shamed off the, you know, shamed away from the platform as a result of it. Um, yeah. you know, but, uh, but that can be such a, an incredible gateway of building a relationship with somebody, which I mean, that's sales 101, right? Build a relationship. Yeah. So I would say, going back to your question, man, just stick to a handful of topics and be yourself. That's it. Yeah. No, I think that's, I think that's important, right? You know, staying in your wheelhouse, you know. Find, find a few topics, a handful of topics that work for you. I love it. I love that. Um, or you can just kind of spitball, uh, you know, spitball off of that. You know, what are some yeah. of the tactics you guys use for fueled for your for your corporate pages, you know, to to get messaging out there? How do you how do you change that message from your personal message? Um, I mean, right now I'm I'm kind of the main guy promoting the brand. So fueled the personality of fueled is kind of my personality because I'm the one out there pushing it. But as far as fueled goes, um, your question is how are we communicating our message and you know like what are we doing strategically content yeah. wise? Yeah. Um, well, we're not doing one one hundredth of of what I want us to do. I want us to have a podcast, obviously have a have a good YouTube channel you know, be a real, like a true content production company. But right now we're a bootstrapped company. We're a startup. Um, and I mean, we're just, we're just hammering social media. People, people tell me all the time, like, man, you guys are just crushing it on social media. And I'm like, dude, you've seen, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> so what's on the roadmap is getting a ton of people on the podcast right now. The, the extent of what we're doing is uh, we record all of our events and we've got a couple of really good video guys in house that they'll chop up videos and um, do some highlight reels. And then we film the entire event, put it in our teachable account so our members can have access to them uh, inside the courses section. So strategically with Fueled Band, it's right now it's just about awareness, yep. building that awareness, building the brand, building the impression of who we are and what we do for our members. Um, highlighting our members is another thing, sharing their testimonials, their experiences. Um, and then I think what we're going to talk about next, or maybe uh, one of our next topics is going to be, how do we take that awareness and leverage it into actually making some money? Yeah, no, that's it. That's exactly where I was going. Right. So, you know, it's awareness, you know, for, for those of you that don't know, there's, you know, in the buyer's journey, right? There, there's the awareness. Um, gosh, I'm totally drawing a blank on the. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a bunch. There's uh, tofu, bofu, mofu. Yeah. There's uh, awareness, it, it, consideration. Yeah, consideration um, there. Interest, consideration. Decision. Yeah, decision, and decision yeah. right? So awareness, consideration, decision is is a pretty common platform, but there's a thousand of them out there, you know, and, and you have to understand, I think, where your business is at to decide how you're going to message. You, you guys are in bootstrap, yeah. startup mode, hustle and grind, you know, build awareness, build, you know, let people know that the brand exists, right? Um, but while you're doing that, it's also important to convert a few of those folks, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so let's talk about some conversion strategies. How do you go from getting yeah. their eyeballs looking at your social media to getting them to buy uh, your product? Yeah, that, this is such a good question. And, and I hope everyone that's listening re listens really close when I, when I talk about this, because it's one of the topics I'm so passionate about. Um, I'm a, I'm a salesman through and through, man. Um, I, I was I was born to do it. I, I'm not the very best in the world at it, but it was what I was born to do. Just human relationships are just super fun to me, and I love the thrill of making a deal. So, the 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 most important thing you can understand, I think, 
when you are trying to build awareness and where you're doing all this is what's the next step? What do you want to drive someone to? Because most people don't have a two-step sales process. Get your attention and close the deal, right? Mm -hmm. That's why there's consideration after awareness, right? Yep. There's there's um, consideration. How do you spark interest? The I A I D A awareness, yep. interest, desire, action, right? That's yep. another funnel theory uh, out there. So, what's the next step? Well, if I'm getting your attention and you like my post or join my free Facebook group or raise your hand and say that you're interested in what I'm doing. Um, we have a really simple funnel for, for um, what the next steps are for us. So there's, if, if we identify that they're extremely interested, we'll invite them to come in, meet with us. And sometimes we will sign them up right on the spot. Yeah. Sometimes they need to go talk to a business partner, talk to a spouse, whatever. Um, but, if someone shows a lot of interest because they know one of our members or they've seen what we're doing in the community, our next step from getting in, getting a conversation with them online, our next step is to get them in the doors, get them here, get them to see field and be like, Whoa, this place is awesome. I've never seen anything. like It's like Disney world for entrepreneurs, you know? <laughs> um, so that's our next step. And then from there, we, we will either try to um, get them to sign up or, if they're kind of on the fence, we'll say, well, hey, look, why don't you come to one of our events for free and get a feel for the community, shake some hands, see what kind of people we're bringing in to do the trainings, and then we'll talk after that. So outlining your steps or your sales process, that that is the key. So if you're getting awareness, you got to know what the next step is. Like in roofing, if I'm getting your attention, my next step is to get an inspection right? If I'm a marketing agency, the next step between getting your attention and, and closing the deal is probably some kind of an audit, right? Like, yep. let me audit your website or your Facebook ads or whatever, uh, kind of the evaluation stage, right? So know what that next step is, be super clear on that and drive people to it. Not on your, not on your, uh, you don't have to do it on your post. You don't have to say, click below to get a free audit. But when someone, someone shows interest, Hit them up in the DMs, man. Like if we're talking about social media here, hit those people up in the DMs um, yeah. and and say, hey, man, uh, saw that you uh, commented on my post. Um, you Are you opposed to having a free audit from, from my company? See what your, uh, what your website conversions look like and maybe if we can help. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I am. I love the DM. Thing. that's that's my game i i hate slamming people with dm so I'll, i'm always the uh i'll always like asking comments like you know if i'm commenting on somebody's post i'll always ask in comments like hey uh you know if you're interested send me a dm that says interested and you mm -hmm. know and and let them reach out to me but you know if they comment on my stuff heck yeah i am all about reaching out in dm i do it all the time it's such such powerful tool um, and, and people are much quicker to respond to that than an email, um, you know, than some of the other yeah. traditional methods of communication that, that we've used in the past. So pretty much everybody's on their phone all the time. Yeah. I hope that seriously, I, I genuinely hope people were listening to that because you have to know what the next step is. People wonder why things aren't working. It's like, well, people aren't going to just call you because they see your face. You got to know what the next step is and you have to invite them to take that step. And most of the time, the next step isn't going to be, Hey, come in and talk to us about joining fueled. It's going to be, Hey, why don't you come to one of our free events? Just get a feel for it. We, we guarantee you will not get a pitch because yep. I think a lot of people compare us to BNI and we are not even close to what BNI is. Um, because, I mean, BNI meetings are basically a hour and a half long pitch. Mm -hmm. This is an hour long networking. You're shaking hands, growing your community, and then you uh, you know you get thirty minutes of training from one of our members, or you get an hour of training from someone that we pay to bring in to to train our members. So, yeah. Um, anyways. 
going too far down the rabbit hole there, but no, know I love what it. your next know what your next step is. Give them an experience. That's I guess that could be the the next step is give them an experience that is yeah. delightful, something that actually brings them some sort of benefit. I hate saying the word value. So <laughs> brings <laughs> them so a benefit. Overused. It's so yeah. overused, right? Yeah. You know, it, it you know but I love I love giving something away you know, saying that you're giving something away, right? You know, for, for us, you know, in for, for pretty much any, any business consultant, any marketer, any, uh, you know, you have to do some sort of audit process to find out what the problem is before you can truly address the problem anyway. So even right. if they, they come and talk to you, you're going to go through that audit process anyway. So like, um, just putting that out there up front, you know, I think and, and providing that as just a, this is a value we provide to anybody that's, you know, anybody that's interested, um, you know, it, it creates that moment where they can connect with you and see what type of product you bring to the stage before they spend money, before they really get engaged with you. And it's an opportunity for you to feel them out, right? Because not everybody yeah. is, uh, is a good fit. Right. So can I share a couple of tips on how to get people to take that next step? Sure. Yeah. Because we're talking about turning eyeballs into dollars, right? And we're talking about tactics to do that. So let's say you've caught someone's attention. You've interacted with them here and there on, we'll just take Facebook, for example. You've interacted with them here and there on Facebook. Um, you became friends, you commented on their posts, they commented on yours. You've built a digital relationship at this point. It's not necessary, you don't have to do that, but um, for them to get get a feel for you is is beneficial, right? I don't believe in no like trust, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yet people have to know, like, and trust you. That's a bunch of bull crap. I buy from people I don't know, I don't like, and I don't trust all the time. <laughs> we However, all we all go to Walmart, right? You know, I don't right. know, like or trust Walmart whatsoever, right. exactly. but I go there for my groceries every week. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But building relationships is is beneficial. Building that relationship and getting that person's attention and that person's awareness is a plus. It's a benefit for when you reach out to them because if they see that you're a genuine human being and you're not some scammy person that's always trying to sell something and when you reach out they're going to feel a lot more comfortable talking to you even if you don't have like a buddy buddy thing going um so here's how i reach out a lot of times um written messages are a great way i mean you don't want to write a super long message a couple sentences um the 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 principle for reaching out is you always want to spark curiosity and uh, Kenny, he's behind me. I don't know if you see him. This yep. right there. Um, he he loves using the principle of like you when you're when you're dating, you go eighty, they come twenty. Right? Uh, I think that's that was on the the movie uh, Hitch. Yeah. Will Smith. Yep. He goes, you you go eighty, she comes twenty. That's what you want to do when you're reaching out to someone. You don't want to be like, hey man, Adam. I got, I just looked at your website, dude. And, and you got a lot of problems. I can solve them. Uh, I need, I want to do a free audit for you. We usually charge two grand for it, but for you, Adam, I'm going to give you a free audit. Like you just smell the salesman <laughs> coming out of that message. Right? So you go 80 and just spark a little curiosity, make them go the other 20. And that would look something like, um, spur of the moment. If I'm reaching out to someone about Fueled, uh, I wouldn't say, hey, we've got a, um, we do monthly events for our members and, and we bring in heavy hitters every, every week. I would say, hey, man, next week we have someone coming in to talk about sales leadership. Is that a relevant topic for you? Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. I love it. Because that's the next step, right? My next step is to get them to come to a free event. Yeah. No, a lot of that, times. That's all I say. A lot of times, I, I use a very similar technique, and I, I and it works so well to start conversations. Um, for instance, I had a conversation with a guy today. Um, you know, I'm like, "Hey, uh, just 
I, I went to check out your website and I noticed that, you know, there's a domain issue. Um, are you aware of that? Right. Just straight up, like mm -hmm. not trying to pitch him, not trying to sell him. Like, and it turned into a conversation and um, yeah, we've got a follow up call uh, later this week to, nice. uh, you know, hash out details. But, you know, I went into that like, hey, I see you have a problem. I just want to make you aware of it because most business owners aren't on their website all day, every day. <laughs> right. So, you know, so just, I, just give them a little nibble. That's yep. it. <laughs> Doesn't have you don't you don't throw the whole kitchen sink at people right off the bat. Spark yeah. some curiosity. Yeah. And then another tactic is is video. You know, um, video obviously is you know we got bright bright blue colors. I'm able to catch people's attention with a selfie video and be like, "What's up, Adam? You're crushing it on social media, man. We've got a we've got a speaker coming in next Tuesday talking about sales leadership." Thought you might want to join. If that's not relevant, though, let me know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, send me send me a DM response if you want to come. That's it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that. It's keeping it simple. Video is so powerful. People uh, drastically underestimate the power of video, um, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because it provides an opportunity for you to give a bit of personality that you just don't get in text in in writing yeah. you know, writing on the screen. So you can put the same message out, both video and text, and you'll get two drastically different reactions from it. Very true. So we are we are getting towards the end of time here. So I always like to wrap up my episodes with final thoughts. That one thing that people can take away uh, from the show and apply to their business tomorrow. So I'll leave the floor to you for your final thoughts. My final thoughts, number one, would be um, confidence because that's what that's all it takes. All it takes is the ability to just not give a crap what anyone's gonna think when you when you start posting your stuff online. I think a lot of people overcomplicate things. They want to write down a, a eighty seven step strategy of how to win online when really, man, even if you use someone else's strategy that has worked, you got to test, you got to, you got to use experience. You've got to use principles and use a strategy if you can, but like something is better than nothing. So muster up the confidence, whatever it takes. If you're listening to this, whatever you do, just post a video on your Facebook or your LinkedIn for the next seven days straight and then evaluate, turn around and say, was that so bad? Like, did I die <laughs> from posting those videos? No, you didn't. It wasn't that hard. You may not get anything out of it. You may not get any sales, but at least you figured out, hey, I can actually do this. So number one, overcome that fear of, of doing it. Muster up the confidence to, to do it. And then I, I would say number two, people get really lost in um, trying to follow some specific process. And don't get me wrong, processes are really important. You got to have a sales process. You have to have your, your sales process really buttoned up. But I just made a post earlier, like 30 minutes ago about the difference between a craftsman and a commodity. And commodities, all they do is they follow a proven process and they maybe make one feature or, or one to three features a little bit better or, or they just do the exact same thing and lower the price right? That's what commodities do. But craftsmen, they take scientific principles, they take what's been proven, and then they add their own flair of creativity to it. They innovate. And um, that's what you look at Elon Musk, you look at Steve Jobs, you look at all the really, really successful innovators out there. That's what they do. They, they take things that are already proven to be true, and they add their own unique flavor to it. And that's what makes them successful. So don't get caught up in the minutia of how did Ammon do it? Or how did Ed Milet do it? Or how did Adam do it? Or, you know, how did all these people get, go viral on social media? Because they went viral because of them. And obviously there's some strategy to it, but um, like I said, nothing is better or something is better than nothing. So don't get caught up in the details. Just go for it. I absolutely love it. Uh, it, it there's nothing 
nothing you could say true about that. Just just go for it. You know, Nike Nike's built an entire brand around the words just do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And there, mm-hmm. there's so much truth to that. So I really appreciate you coming on the show, sharing, man, great nuggets of information, uh, you know, in, in how to convert, um, you know, from eyeballs into dollars, right? And and what that looks like. So I really appreciate your time. Where can people find you, first of all? And then where can mm-hmm. people find out more information about Fuel and what you guys got going on? Yeah, absolutely. So I would direct people to Fuel Nation. My friends list on Facebook is starting to really fill up. I'm going to have to do one of those uh, clean up things where it goes through and deletes all your old friends that you don't talk to anymore. But um, the best way to get in touch with us is to join Fueled Nation because we're in there every day. We're doing Facebook lives all the time with heavy hitters like Dale Childress, the master closer was on yesterday with Sean Winkle. We were kind of having a, a debate about sales philosophy. We, we have people come in all the time and do Facebook lives in that free group. So Mm -hmm. I would say Fueled Nation, look up Fueled Nation on Facebook, just search it, ask to be, uh, become a member. And, um, if you say you're interested in learning about Fueled, it'll ask you if you're interested in learning about Fueled. If you say yes, one of uh, me or Kenny will reach out to you. All right. Absolutely. Fantastic. Really appreciate your time. Uh, as always, I appreciate everybody jumping on the show today who joined us live. Uh, You guys are what makes the show happen and why we're here every week. Um, As always, don't forget to hop on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review. Uh, We are on everything from Apple to Spotify to iHeartRadio, Listen Notes, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We are also on YouTube. And then don't forget to come find us on all these social media networks. Uh, We appreciate you and have a wonderful rest of your week. Well, that wraps up yet another episode of the Winning Tactics podcast. You can find Adam on both the LinkedIn and Facebook platforms. And to support the show and ensure the success of the podcast, would you kindly consider visiting Patreon forward slash Adam Sinkus? We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, from the Winning Tactics Podcast, remember, culture is how your team behaves when no one is looking. Take good care and thanks for listening.